<laughs> Vapor Wrestle Target 200. We'll talk about it. Hey everybody, Ken here with Snohomish Cider and Brew, and today we're going to bring to you a review of the Vaporesso Target 200. I've been using this for a little over a month and a half, just giving uh, all the coils its, its little go-through and the different types, and using different tanks on the mod as well to see how the mod performs aside from the tank and vice versa. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead first and uh, do a down low, and then we'll come back up top and I'll talk about it more. Here is the front of the box, the back of the box, the side of the box, other side of the box, top of the box, and bottom of the box. And here's what comes inside of the box. You have the user manual, one warranty card, which I do suggest filling out right away. Instructions to see if your Target 200 is counterfeit. One mod, one extra glass bubble tank with extra O-rings. A USB-C cable for firmware update. I don't suggest charging your batteries through the mod. Please use an external charger for safety. One Vaporesso eye tank, which holds eight mLs of liquid and comes pre-installed with the 0.2 coils. And finally, one additional 0.4 GTX coil for the tank. Taking a look at the tank here first, it is a Vaporesso tank. It is called the eye tank. As you can see here on the bottom, it says designed by Vaporesso eye tank. On the top, you have a 510 drip tip, which is removable. The juice flow or filler is right here. Now with this, all you have to do is find the arrow and then kind of press and rotate to the side. As you can see, you actually have a juice fill membrane to help keep the liquid in once you fill it up. The one thing I will say as a con for this is the way this style is, I wish it would have rotated a little bit more open to where you could easily fit your uh, bottles in there. <clears throat> the problem is with some of your uh, gorilla style bottles, you're gonna have a hard time filling up without taking the uh, drip tip off. On the bottom, you have one, two, three slots for airflow. They all turn and they all stop. Of course, open on one end means open all the way around. One gold-plated 510 pin. What's kind of interesting on this here is you actually have a gold-plated portion here, which helps with the juice flow. Supposedly with these little tubes down below, uh, it lets the juice collect at the bottom, and then when you vape again, the juice kind of gets sucked back up into the coil, as well as this little interesting uh, swooshy design is supposed to help the air circulate even more to get a smoother experience. Now the coils themselves are press fit and what I really do kind of like about this here is that you have a kind of a hollowed out chimney to where the juice kind of gets in all the way around instead of just at the bottom. So you have it coming here at the top side as well as towards the bottom side. Taking a quick look at the coil that comes pre-installed with the tank here, this is the GTI coil, the 0.2 mesh. 60 to 75 watts is the rated range there. It says best at 70, but take a look at the big, huge cotton windows. Oh yeah, Real, you're gonna get a lot of saturation on that. The other thing I wanna point out here is the type of mesh design that comes in there is a honeycomb mesh. Now I have been vaping on the uh, 0.2 and the 0 0.4. 0 0.4 is also a honeycomb mesh at a lower wattage rating, roughly good at about 55 watts. I tend to prefer this one a bit more. So the way I like to prime these coils is with a little bit of liquid right on the cotton window just at first. Just a little bit, kinda let that soak in and then just turn to the next and so on and so forth until the cotton is pretty much saturated on the outside and then we'll do a drip or two on the inside then we're just going to put it back into the tank fill the tank up and let it set aside for a little bit here you could just put the coil straight into the tank fill it with liquid and let it sit for about seven to ten minutes so that's something else we can do here and then just pop it right in like that screw the bottom on and we are good to go and here's what i mean when it comes to filling it up here you can kind of get the tip in there okay, but it's going to be stopped by that 510 pin. We are able to fill it up, thankfully, but you might have a bit of a difficulty. So you can always just take the 510, 510 pin, 510 drip tip off, and you can get your nozzle down there just a little bit more. I would highly suggest doing this if you're using a 100 or 120 mil Juicy Gorilla bottle type thing in my bobber. But uh, yeah, so we're filling this tank up, and then we're just going to let it sit aside for a bit while we go look at the mod. And Bob's your uncle. There we go. Now let's take a quick look at the mod here. What really stands out to me first and foremost is the braided grips. It has a very good grip on it. A little squishy because of the braids, but I really like it. Now, Vaporesso does say that this kind of helps wicks away the moisture 
uh, any kind of wetness. I'm guessing if you have juicy hands or maybe uh, you just got out of the shower, you're using this as a shower mod, which I really wouldn't suggest, but I mean, it kind of keeps it dry in this area only. I also do really like the Vaporesso branding on this. It's kind of classy, not loud, not boisterous, not noisy, nothing like that. It's just Vaporesso, nicely engraved. I also like, I, I don't know if this is a zinc alloy or what, but it's a, it's a nice sturdy metal. The gunmetal gray works really well around it. You have a raised 510 platform with a spring-loaded 510 pin held in place by three screws. Now, the reason why I think they have this raised here, and this is just my postulation, is that a lot of people don't like having their atomizers cut into the actual mod themselves, or after a while, some people will tighten them down a bit too tight and leave a ring around. Aesthetically, it's not pleasing, I get that. That's, I think, really the only reason why. Otherwise, I mean, it doesn't bother me. You do have a little bit of a hangover on bigger atomizers. We'll take a look at that in just a bit here. But let's take a look here at the actual mod itself. You have a fire button, you have your up and down button, you have your menu button slash mode button, and you have a USB-C slot. Now, once again, I do not suggest charging batteries through any mod whatsoever. Please use an external battery charger. And also, It's in the shape of a little face. Look at that thing. Do, 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 do. All right, now taking a look at the actual battery door itself, I really do like this battery door. It's held on really tight. It says Target 200 on the bottom, CE, don't throw it away, UKCA, Axon chip, made in China, uh, VSG211027, for those of you who care what the numbers say. With this here, you have to slide it open, well, it's kind of like a slide open and, and let open up. So it's spring loaded to a certain extent, slide it and let it open. You have your little hinge here. It's, it feels a little loose, but it's tightened once you actually put the batteries in. You have your positive and your negative markings there. So let's go ahead and put the batteries in for it there. We're using home life batteries today. I'm gonna go ahead and put in one positive up and one negative up. And you'll notice as soon as you actually start to push this down, there's gonna be a little bit of resistance which is nice. So it actually uses the resistance and the springs quite well to lock this in place. Yeah, doesn't come open, doesn't come open. The other thing I like about this, it's so tight, and this is not this is not a high-end mod, but I love the fact that there's no battery rattle. I'm shaking it right now. No battery rattle, none whatsoever, not even any button rattle, which is really, really nice for this. So we're just gonna press the button five times, one, two, three, four, five and it starts to turn on right away actually, which is pretty cool. Now this is set to pulse mode right now. There are three main modes for this mod, but uh, we'll get to that in a second. You have your up button for your wattage. It goes up pretty fast all the way to uh, 220 watts. Now unfortunately, it does not round robin. The lowest it will fire is five watts. You have your resistance, your voltage, your puff counter, and the seconds amount of your puff that you have. Now this is set to pulse mode. Now for those of you who remember the gen mods and the pulse mode, pretty much what it does is just does little two millisecond firings to kind of keep it around the wattage that you want. So bzz, 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 bzz. You see that work the best when you're using rebuildables on this type of thing. Now there's two other modes on here as well. You have your normal and then you have your FT mode. The way to get to these is quite simple. You can press the menu button three times, one, two, three, That'll get you into the menu. And it'll give you here, you have your FT mode, which I guess is supposed to be something like a, uh, a flavor mode. It's supposed to be kind of like a curvy, uh, flavory type thing there. I've messed around with it. It's actually pretty good with the step, with the tank that it comes with, but I prefer to use pulse mode for rebuildables or even just your variable wattage normal mode. Now you keep going down here, and as you see, you have a DIY mode, which we'll get into in just a second. You have your system set, and then you have your exit. Going into the system set here, it'll give you a default, so basically just resets everything. Then you have your smart mode, which is variable wattage, which won't let you go above what the actual rating of the coil is. Then you have your puff counter. By going into this, you just press the button there for the menu. Now you take a look here, it actually goes by days, which is why you see I've used this mainly on one day here. At least that's my thought for it, but you can easily reset it just by going to reset, boom, now we're at zero puffs. Back on the main screen here, we have the DIY setting. There you have your variable wattage, variable voltage, your bypass, and then your exit. So there is no temp control option for this mod. However, if you go into variable wattage, for those of you who like to rebuild and have a little bit of an extra oomph, there's a variable wattage soft, a variable wattage normal, aka VWN, and variable wattage hard. 
So we're just gonna keep this on variable watch normal for now. And as you can see, that changes. Now there's another way to go across this too. All you have to do is hold down the menu button for three seconds and it will flash. And then you can just cycle through by holding it down and then pressing the up and down button. So you have the FT, the pulse, and the normal wattage. Let's take a look and see what this mod looks like with a couple of different tanks. Here we have the I tank first. So it looks rather nice. I like how it's just like right in there. I think it's about a 24 millimeter goes up to 25 here. So you can probably get away with maybe a 27 altogether. But together, this actually looks like a really nice setup. I do like it. Now the tank doesn't really come in any other colors that I've noticed. It's all just kind of that gunmetal gray. It's kind of matchy matchy, but it is quite nice. Let's take a look at a couple other tanks and, and whatnot on here as well. And here's what it looks like with the OXVA Arbiter 2 on it. Here's what it looks like with the Fat Rabbit on it. A little bit of overhang on the actual 510 lifted portion part, but still, I think it looks pretty decent on there. Going a little old school with the Steam Crave Aroma Miser Plus RDTA. Still a little bit overhang on the uh, actual platform, but none on the mod. So it's almost quite flush with that. So no overhang, which is nice. And finally, some really old school here. Let's go with the Twisted Messes 30 RDA. I got to really clean this one. This came out of my storage, but uh, yeah, still looks nice on there. Little chonky, a uh, little different, but yeah, it can hold up to a 30 millimeter with no problem. It's still being flush to the actual mod itself. Take a look here. It actually still has a bit of an indentation. So you can probably even have I'd say probably 30 would be the, the most, but yeah, no overhang on a 30. All right, so that's what we have for the uh, Vaporesso down low and looky loo. I gotta say, I'm really impressed with this mod. I really do like it. It fits well in the hands. I like that I can just thumb fire with no issue whatsoever. Um, I will give it some cons though, uh, subjective cons at best, because I haven't really had any issues with the mod itself. Now it is firmware version 1.0. I don't know if or when Vaporesso is gonna push out any new firmware for it. I guess we'll just have to wait and see on that. But pros, really, really compact dual 18650 mod. No battery rattle, no button rattle. Very, very nice. I love that I can just thumb fire it if I want to or turn around finger fire. I don't use in the finger much. I, I prefer using the thumb. Other pros, it's just very smooth, very buttery. The uh, menu system is very easy to use. Battery life is pretty good depending on what batteries you put in there. I like that it has the FT mode for flavor. I'm gonna call FT as in Flavor Town. Sorry, Guy Fieri, but that's what I'm gonna call it. Then you have your pulse, which is good for rebuildables. You also have your variable wattage, which is good for rebuildables as well. If you're using a sub tank, I would suggest stick on the, uh, the FT mode. Uh, another con, a subjective con that I would give this really is just the drip tip and the fill method. I would have liked to have seen Vaporesso have it open up just a little bit more to where I don't have to worry about the 510 drip tip or getting in the way at all. Um, so that's a subjective con. If I'm using 100 mil or 120 mil, anything bigger than a 60 mil really for a Gorilla bottle, then I do have to take the drip tip off. It is a little difficult with a 60 mil, but it is doable at the same time. One of the other subjective cons I'm going to give it is the airflow. Now the airflow, don't get me wrong, it's nice, it's smooth. You get a lot of airflow with it wide open. However, the noise, this is not a silent tank. Now, of course, no tanks really are, but I mean, just give it a listen here. That's like Darth Vader or Darth Vapor, if you want to call it. It's very, very noisy, it's even when you're vaping with it. has a little bit of a whistle, just a bit of a whistle. Now, if we're gonna cut down the airflow to about halfway, it does improve the air, it does not put a I can speak today, I know I can. What it does here is that it actually improves the sound a bit, but it still doesn't go away all the way. But to me, it's at a much more tolerable level. Um, however, vaping at 65 watts, even with the tri airflow there, I tend to keep it a little more more open, so maybe have it closed a quarter of the way. That does help with the uh, the loudness of the airflow. Ooh. I gotta say, flavor-wise, the coils are really, really, really flavorful. They last for a good while too. 
Uh, for mine, uh, the, the coils last for about roughly one and a half to two weeks of moderate to heavy use. Uh, maybe even a little bit longer if you don't use it as much, but I would say that if you're not going to use it a lot, then go ahead and make sure to empty out that tank before you go to bed. That way you don't kind of have the coil be oversaturated after a while. Because unfortunately, no coils are leak-proof. Once they become oversaturated, that's kind of it. You make sure you want to make sure that's all dried out. Anyway, I really, really, really do like this kit setup. You can also get the mod separate as well as the tank separate, but uh, it's a good, good banger, good little kit. Oh, yeah. So there we go. Vapor Wrestle Target 200 kit. I don't really have anything bad to say about it other than subjectively. So there we go. I want to thank you very much. As always, I'm Ken with Snow Homer Cider and Brew. And until next time, have yourself a good one. I'll see you when I see you. Pros. Really, really compact dual. Uh, pros. Let's try this again.